Final Fantasy XIII Lightning Returns is an action RPG by Square Enix and the final game in the XIII franchise. Uh, probably. Even though I was very vocal about my distaste with the first offering, Square still sent me an early copy to review for Lightning Returns. Why am I telling you all this? New FTC regulations. Fun, huh? Anyway, on with the review. Lightning is back after 500 years from a crystal nap and is the only playable character this time around. You heard right, this is a one-woman show. Not that you'll mind, unless you don't like the iconic female cloud. Our story continues from where the second one left off. Lightning once again sets off on an epic journey to save her sister Sarah, who died in 13-2 as punishment from pulling a chrono trigger. Oh, and no plummeting the world into chaos didn't help things either. So Lightning returns to clean things up like a maid. But she only has 13 days to save everyone. Eh, scratch that. Six days according to Hope. No worries though, by saving souls she can earn more time to save the day. But more on that later. Gameplay is totally different than Final Fantasy XIII, and I for one am glad. I actually passed on XIII too because I thought it would be a terrible game like XIII was. But with Returns, it's the same good old RPG goodness I know and love from Square, but disguised as an adventure game. The battle system is still an active time thing, but it's more player friendly now. Think Tales of Symphonia or Kingdom Hearts. Players fully take control of Light's movements and attacks during a battle. Though your active time battle gauge will drain after each action during a fight. So to survive, you'll need to swap in different abilities for Lightning to use. This new battle system is known as the style change, by the way. These different garbs or costumes can be bought from the outfitters or given by hope after so many days have passed. Each new suit gives you all kinds of locked powers and will help you increase your stats too. Thankfully, the Crystarium system is gone and has been replaced with schemas. These are really easy to use and assign abilities for light too. I love this mechanic. Still fighting isn't what the game is all about this time. It's all about the questing. You can kill as many beasties as you want, but you won't gain anything, so it's a huge time waster. Now quests come in two varieties, main and side quests. Main quests, like fighting snow for instance, will progress the game's story. Side quests will help you save the world and get stronger. How do you do a side quest? Well, you either check the bulletin board by that crazy chocobo chick or meet folks in person. Just be warned though, some side missions can take a full day and waste all of your time. Instead of spending that day saving six people, you only saved one. Just remember that. Also depending on how long you take or mess up events, quests can be failed. So you have now forever doomed that person's soul to Outworld. Anyway. Each NPC has their own tragic story that will pull players' heartstrings, but even with New Game Plus, you'll never be able to save everyone. See, time is the biggest enemy Lightning faces. Just like Link did in Majora's Mask, Light 2 only has a set number of days before Armageddon. Luckily though, our heroine has some cool tricks to help you save time, but they will use her energy points for that day. These powers include the handy dandy time stop, good for side questing or running around aimlessly, Teleporting uses two EP points, but this is great for visiting other places instead of just waiting around for non-playable characters to show up or doors to open. And that's just to name a few to keep this spoiler free. Graphics wise, everything is a step up from the previous titles, though you can see that this game was a bit rushed at times. Sometimes you'll come across screen tearing, glitched non-playable characters, and pixelated blurry backgrounds. But thankfully, load times only happen when going by train, using instant transmission, or waiting for a cutscene. So in-game you never need to worry about any lag or slowdowns when exploring. Speaking of that, the environments are incredible and even change to reflect the time of day now, which is awesome. This is some of the coolest scenery I've seen in a video game. I mean, seriously, just look at this. It's amazing. Plus, these areas are massive to boot. Some locations will take you a good hour to run from one end to the other. In fact, Square said this is the biggest Final Fantasy game we've ever made, and I believe them. So, I know what you're thinking. What could he possibly have wrong with this game? Actually, only a few minor gripes. First off, jumping and overall platforming still sucks, and I hate it. Not much has been fixed since 13, and believe me, you can tell. The camera and gameplay during these parts just feels annoying and sloppy, which is a bummer because the devs included a lot more areas you need to jump and climb to to find everything. 
Lastly, the story was just too predictable and very disappointing. Not much originality plot-wise this time. If it wasn't for the interesting NPCs, I probably would have bashed my head repeatedly against the wall. All thanks to our leading lady's narrative, which is so boring and too emotionless. I get it, Light. You're losing your humanity, but I've seen zombies with more personality and life in them. The rest of the cast, nah, they do an okay job. Still, I prefer the Japanese actors with subtitles. By the way, you can actually download the Japanese voice track for a limited time off PSN. But act fast, this offer won't last long. And that's all I really had wrong. No, really. Actually, this game surprised me, and that's a good thing. As for the music in Final Fantasy XIII Lightning Returns, it's excellent, and I enjoyed hearing past Final Fantasy titles along with arrangements from XIII's original soundtrack. Though I have to say, my absolute favorite part of this game, aside from the awesome combat, was exploring every nook and cranny the world had to offer. Even with time ticking away, the amount of freedom the developers gave is insanely epic. As an honorable mention, and sounding a bit creepy at the same time, dressing up light was fun, and I felt like synergy picking out Jerrica's outfits. Aside from all the costumes you can pick up in the game or buy and find, Square is planning DLC based on popular Final Fantasy characters from the past games very soon. Even a skin of Laura Croft. Why? Because Square made Tomb Raider cool again. That's why. To wrap up, Final Fantasy XIII Lightning Returns is actually a good game. But I don't know if I'd call it a fantastic RPG or even the best Square game this year. <coughs> Bravely default. But it's still worth checking out. To be honest, this is one game I would really love to complete 100%, but sadly, I just don't have the time. I did breeze through the game's main story in about 10 to 12 hours, give or take. And I actually did both Snow, Knoll, and Meeting the Saint all on day three. That time stop ability, let me tell you, man is it awesome. Which you can actually see in my walkthrough on the LP channel. Shameless plug, I know. For people new to Final Fantasy XIII, I think you could beat the game in about three days, making Lightning Returns the perfect game for a weekend chock full of fun and adventure. Final Fantasy XIII Lightning Returns gets an 8 out of 10.